These are small positive strand RNA viruses of which poliovirus and the human common cold virus, human rhinoviruses, are good examples. In this case, there are three different protein subunits, each with one of these beta jelly roll designs, very, very similar to that red beta jelly roll in the canine parvovirus, that assemble as shown into an icosahedral structure. And so 1 60th of this structure has three jelly rolls, a red one, a blue one, and a green one, uh, designated in that uh, order, VP3, VP1, and VP2 for the colors as I named them, uh, forming the sort of assembly that you see here. Now, uh, those three subunits, as I said, look strikingly like that same beta jelly roll we saw in the parvovirus subunit, but the loops are a little less extensive because in this case with three subunits, uh, the, uh, the size of the particle doesn't need to be additionally augmented by taking up space with those loops and one can still package adequate amounts of RNA. One other feature of the architecture of this particle that's noteworthy and we're going to see in various forms as we look at even more complicated virus particles is the nature of the interaction among the subunits which not only involves interfaces between pre-folded rigid domains of subunits, but an elaborate inner scaffold and a little bit of an outer scaffold made by parts of this protein subunit that fold up only when the particle assembles. And so on the right you can see some hint of this in a blow up of VP1, VP2, and VP3 where you can see that in addition to the, uh, the, the jelly roll domains, there are extended arms, they happen to be uh, N-terminal and extend inward in the particle, that fold together when the particle assembles. Now these viruses manage to package a 9 kilobase single-stranded RNA genome, but still use about a third of the genome to encode the code. 